Hi, my name is Dr. Hanna Hamlin and I am a patient with type 1 diabetes. I have a practice called Hamlin Health where I do a lot of type 1 diabetes specific education. Not just how to optimize blood glucose levels, but really how to improve quality of life. My background is in lifestyle uh, medicine, so we talk a lot about nutrition, movement, sleep, other really important pieces for diabetes care. But today what I want to bring to you is five tips that I have personally learned from using the OmniPod 5 system. And what I've found is that the algorithm is actually really cool and it's been a, a lot more of a positive experience than I expected initially. And so tip number one is really looking at how can this algorithm help? What pieces does it do? But what pieces do I still need to do manually? And the big, big piece that's so important when it comes to the OmniPod 5 is you absolutely have to pre-bolus, meaning that you cannot just sit down, take your insulin and eat a sandwich and expect it to work out just like when you're on shots. Really the timing between telling the Omnipod you're going to need the insulin and eat the carbs and the time that insulin kicks in is so important. When we don't get that timing right, when we eat and take insulin at the same time, our body digests those carbohydrates faster than our insulin kicks in and so we see a spike in blood glucose. So on the Omnipod 5 system, it does an amazing job regulating basal rates, helping reduce the standard deviation or kind of the big swings for blood sugar. We absolutely still have to pre-bolus for meals. Tip number two is sleep. I have had such an incredible increase of sleep quality on the Omnipod 5. I cannot actually remember, I was thinking about it before I made this video, I cannot remember the last time I woke up in the middle of the night and treated it low, which is so freaking cool, because before when I was on multi-daily injections, that was happening quite a lot for me actually. Um, and so what I found is it just does a really good job of preventing lows, but because of that, because I've become more and more confident with having less lows at night, I'm actually able to to correct my blood sugar a little bit before I go to bed without fearing a low in the middle of the night. And it allows me to have kind of a lower blood glucose as I'm falling asleep, which then keeps me lower throughout the night. And that's done wonders for my time and range. It's done wonders for my average um, blood glucose level. And so that's one thing. And obviously um, this is something you would definitely want to work with your doctor with and not do on your own, but, but really kind of sleeping with less lows has been huge but also being able to really titrate that blood sugar number going to bed. So it's where I want it to be and, and really not higher. The next thing I've, I found that is incredible with the Omnipod 5 is walking and exercising with less lows. And really, I think the way that that works so well is the algorithm is able to decrease the amount of basal insulin you get when it notices that your blood glucose is dropping. And that's really nice because we, we can't really do that when we're on a long acting insulin like Atlantis or Traceba. Um, and when we're on a kind of a manual type of insulin pump, without the automated system, it doesn't know to change your basal rate unless you tell it. Now, what's interesting is the automated version of Omnipod 5 actually does also have an activity mode where it increases the goal blood glucose level um, so that you can kind of tell it ahead of time if you're going to need less insulin because you have an upcoming workout. And I tried that a couple of times when I first started the Omnipod 5 system. And to be honest, I haven't quite figured out how to make it work for me. I found that when I was using that, it was actually kind of, it was reducing my insulin so much where I was getting high blood sugars during my workout. And maybe my workouts weren't intense um, enough for me to need that. So what I also found was that I would then kind of be higher during my, my workout. And then after I finished my workout, it would increase even more. And that's because that basal insulin, which would have been peaking at two hours, you know, was, was much lower. And so I found that I can actually get away with walking, going on long walks and doing certain types of exercise without needing to make any adjustments through the activity mode. Now, that being said, if I'm going to go on um, a workout and I notice I'm, let's say 85 down arrow, I'm going to definitely have a snack still. So I am doing a little bit of kind of manual thinking around my workouts, but it's a lot less and it's been great. I I, you may have seen from some of my videos, I just got a new puppy, so I'm doing lots of dog walks, and it's just been super nice. I always carry low snacks, but I don't need to use them that often, and that is such a difference than before when I was using um, manual and the freestyle libre. The next thing, and really I don't know if this is so much of a tip, but it's just a explanation of my experience that may help you if you are interested in the Omnipod 5 system or you're thinking about maybe moving towards it is that I feel like I 
think so much less about diabetes because of the system, because I feel like after the first week or so, I really learned to trust it a little bit. Now, I'm not blind trust, certainly. I check my blood glucose level still many times a day. I'm always glancing at my Dexcom, but I feel like if I get really caught up in a project with work and like two hours I'm really focused and I don't take a look at it, I'm not, I'm not stressed if I remember like, oh, I haven't checked my blood sugar. I kind of, I can lean on it a little bit. I can say, oh, it's probably fine, right? Um, and so that has been a really cool quality of life upgrade with the Omnipod 5 system. And again, it's it's not blind trust, but that, that ability to kind of take some of that back of my mind thought process that's focusing on blood glucose management throughout the day and, and put that to rest has been really, really cool. Um, and I feel like I am less of a kind of, I'm less mechanical about my diabetes care. I can be a little bit more flexible because of the trust that I've created with it. And so that's just that's just huge from a feelings perspective and uh, my ability to feel confident in the other things I do during the day. Um, the next thing that I love about the Omnipod 5, and this is really a comparison tip when we're looking at other insulin pump systems on the market is that I'm pretty active. I love to do yoga. And one thing about the two the tube insulin pumps like T-Slim and Medtronic, I've been on both before, is that the it's harder to figure out where to have them for your workout if you're clipping them to your pants, if you're clipping them to your bra, um, but also they move around a lot. If you're really active and you're jumping a lot or in yoga, we do a lot of like inversion poses. I've had, it, when I was on the T-Slim, I remember going to yoga and I would it would fall out of my bra and hit my face. And it like happened enough times where I was like, this is so frustrating. Um, and, and not to say that that's you know a, a fit for everybody, but I have just loved the Omnipod. Sometimes I even forget where it is on my body. Like I'll, it'll expire and I'll go to change it. And I'm like padding, you know, like it's on my legs or my arms today, uh, which is really fun that, that it's a smaller version of the previous Omnipod. Um, and you can kind of see it even here through my shirt, but it is pretty slender. And so it's easy to forget about, um, which is just really, really nice. The kind of pros and cons to wearing an insulin pump is that I really love cryotherapy and sauna therapy. And so when I've got insulin on my body, I don't want it to denature by be going, going below levels of freezing or above kind of 83 degrees for an extended period of time. Um, and so what I found is that it, I can't use the sauna with the Omnipod. That's kind of maybe a, a piece that's pros and cons for, for the actual device uh, on the body. but. What I have found as far as my routine is that because I change my insulin pump out on my body every 72 hours, I just do the sauna at the time that I change it. So if I know it's expired and, and I need to change it kind of within the next six hours, I'll plan a sauna session. And then so that the, any insulin that is denatured that's left in the system is just pulled off and then replaced with a new one. And that seems to work well. So if you're a sauna user, um, that's something that can be, be helpful. And if you're not a sauna user, I highly recommend it. There are so many health benefits from sauna use, specifically cardiovascular benefits. And what is really neat about an improvement in cardiovascular benefits for people who use sauna is that type 1 diabetes and having less than ideal blood glucose, level, glucose levels at times actually can increase some of your cardiovascular disease risk. And so I like to use sauna as kind of a balancing tool there, um, just bringing in an extra, an extra health tip. So those are my tips. None of this is considered medical advice for you. Just because I am a doctor doesn't mean I'm your doctor. And so I highly recommend anything you learn from this run by your doctor before you implement into your life. Um, again, this is just created for medical education. Thanks for listening and please check out the links below. Um, if you haven't already, I'd love for you to subscribe and like this video. It really helps other people uh, find it if they're looking for similar information. So have a wonderful day and thanks for listening.